hello guys you're welcome back to my channel and today we are going to talk about you're going to pick it up from where we got the other time and we're going to talk about the conservation law and in the end i'm going to show you why we are even talking about the conservation law why we need or the relevance or significance of the conservation law so i'm going to start with just a one-dimensional you know space okay that's just a, um this line over here with two points at the end is just a one-dimensional space and what I'm trying to say is that assuming that F is an amount of substance okay and <coughs> what is happening here is that um, we have some amount of substance that are being that that is actually flowing from this point over here to that point okay so the substance could be anything it could be any physical quantity it could be temperature but any kind of quantity you can think of in space that can be you know moving from one point to the other and um, if we have such a thing going on within this space this one-dimensional space then I can write the density in the domain the density in the domain um, is going to be given by g of xt right yeah u of xt and if i want to know the total amount of substance which is the mass at any point in time okay that amount of substance is going to be given by the integral from x naught to x1 because you have the substance moving from x naught to x1 okay of the density u of xt del x Okay, so I'm using del x because u is a function of both x and t. Okay, so one thing we also have to know in this dimensional space, I'm not talking about just the in integral, but the change in mass with respect to time is equal to the amount flowing into the domain minus the amount flowing outside of the domain. Okay, so the rate of change in mass with respect to t or the rate of change in mass is just going to be f of x naught t minus f of x1 t okay yes so let me let me call this one the first equation let me call that the second equation now we know that from equation one uh, from equation one if I do the same thing dm dt that is going to be d dt of the integral from x0 to x1 u of xt del x I hope you all get it okay now one thing we have to know here is that I can push this derivative into the integral okay and since u is still a function of x and t the derivative here becomes a partial derivative so we're going to have dm dt being equal to the integral from x naught to x1 del del t u of xt del x right okay now let's also go back to the second equation over here now when we go back to the second equation I would like to write the m d t as the negative uh, the negative of f of x one t minus f of x naught t, and then this is something we've seen before the fundamental um, theorem of calculus, right? That when you have a definite integral or a definite integral, you can write it as that. Right, so if I have an integral from A to B of maybe f of x dx, this is the same as a capital F of B minus F of A. Okay, so it means that if I have F of B minus F of A, I can rewrite it as an integral. Right, yes, so it implies that this dm dt is actually going to be equal to negative the integral now is going to be a partial integral because f is a function of x and t so the integral of 
x or oh, x starting from x not to x1 f of xt del um, x right does that make a lot of sense oh hold on it's supposed to be del f oh sure del, del x right yeah so it's del del f del x and the reason why it's del f, del f del x is that when you go back to this okay if i want to rewrite this as an integral this lowercase f here it's actually the derivative of the capital f of x. Okay, so that's why you are seeing the, the integral of del f of xt del x. All that del x again. Okay. But um, we already know that dm dt is giving us that. Okay. So it implies that you know the integral from zero x zero to x one of del del t g of x t del x is equal to the neg uh, negative of x naught x one del del x capital F of x t um, del x. Okay, and what can we say about the integrands? What is inside the integral uh, the integral they have to be the same right sorry I think I need to put the negative inside here let me not, let me not say this um, okay so del x so what I'm going to say is that this is going to be the same as x not x1 del del t u of x t del x being equal to the integral from x0 x1 nega uh, the, ne the negation of ne del del x f of x t del x and then now I can go ahead and equate what is inside the integral okay so oh my god so I can I can conclude that del u of x t del t is going to be equal to the negation of del f of x t del x okay and this is what we call the conservation law the conservation law so why are we even talking about a conservation law the conservation law is very important in the field of PDEs because most of the PDEs we know the transport equation, the you know the the diffusion equation, the wave equation, they are all generated from the conservation law. Okay, so for example, one, let's assume that I have my f to be equal to c u, where c is just the speed and you know u is just a quanti quantity we are trying to transport from one point to the other f is equal to c u right from the conservation law what can we say um, we know that del u del t is supposed to be equal to negative of f of t um sorry the del del x of f of x t but what is f of x t f of x t is c u okay so this is going to be u t being equal to negative c u x now let's send this one to the the right hand side to the left hand side we're going to have u t plus c u x being equal to zero and this is the transport equation right transport equation right that's it similarly I'm gonna do one more example just to make you as appreciate what the conservative uh, conservation laws are or what a conservation law is sorry now let's pick F being equal to negative K U X and what should come to mind is the diffusion equation K is the, dis the, the diffusivity and here we can apply the same Thing, del u del t is going to be equal to negative del del x of k oh sorry negative k 
negative k g x. Now, as you can see, there's going to be u t being equal to the negative, negative cancel out. And now I have k g x x. So we have u t minus k u x x being equal to 0. And that is the diffusion equation. Right? Yeah, so this is the relevance or significance of the conservation law. It's it's what generates that is from this that we have the generation of all these PDEs, the 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 well known PDEs we've been we 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 will be talking about mostly in this lessons or in these lessons, which we've already talked about one, the transport equation. Yeah, so um, this is going to be the end of the video. And in our next video, we are going to start talking about the um, kinds of, you know, conditions we can have for partial differential equations. That includes the boundary conditions and initial conditions. We are going to talk about the Dirichlet, you know, boundary conditions. We are going to talk about the Neumann, you know, conditions. We are going to talk about the Robin conditions and the periodic ones too as well. So see you in the next video. And if you like the content of my video, please leave a like on the channel, um, on the video, and then subscribe to the channel. See ya.